Okay, uh, so good morning, guests and judges. So my name is Jeremy and my partner is Abigail. Today we're gonna be presenting our company, Skillmatcher. So Skillmatcher is a platform that identifies skills that young adults have and need to acquire and then matches them with opportunities. So we found that uh, students can find it difficult to find their first experience as companies often want to, people to have prior experience and students might not have the experience. Additionally, students might have some skills but may not know how they can be applied in the workplace. Finally, students often lack clarity and have a hard time identifying the range of working opportunities and career paths. So according to UNICEF, just going to school will not be enough to prepare students for jobs in the future. Thus, they need to find ways to improve upon their skills more broadly. Hence, Skillmatcher, an online platform that helps young adults to identify their skills, match users with boundless opportunities, um, a platform to recognize young talents. Oh, sorry, my Wi-Fi kind of cut out for a bit. Uh, so how it works in our revenue model. So Skillmatcher has a freemium model. So for the basic option, we will start by conducting a preliminary skills assessment, then asking the user to build a portfolio on their profile with their projects, presentations, class assignments, etc. We will then have people in software analyze this information to inform users about their existing skills and areas that they would have to work on. So they can then apply to a company that they find interesting or they'll have to submit a resume. The company will then look at the resume and the user's portfolio and decide whether they would like to consider interviewing the user. So the paid version will come, on, come with additional features of helping with the application process and one-on-ones with experts to figure out a application plan and to further build their portfolio, along with matching them with a personalized list of potential companies that are taken and matched from their preliminary skills assessment and their portfolio in order to recommend the companies that they can best offer their values to. Additionally, we will also provide tutoring options to improve skills. So one-on-ones will have additional costs, but pre-recorded content will come with the premium model. So next slide is just, uh, it's just, it's just the, uh, it, it, it's just a description of the revenue model that I just mentioned earlier. So EdTech is a growing space. According to Jakarta Hub, $200 million raised in EdTech uh, space for Indonesia in 2019 alone. The industry had an expected growth rate of 24.9%, and this was before the pandemic. So. so we have a pretty broad competitive landscape, which includes EdTech companies, content creators, job boards, traditional options, and online networking professionals. However, even though we have an extremely broad competitive landscape, we think that we offer distinctive value compared to all of them. So firstly, with Skillmatcher, oh yeah. Firstly, with Skillmatcher, companies can be matched with potential applicants with verified skills who have more potential in thriving in the company. So Skillmatcher makes the application scanning process more efficient for companies through our user profiles because they have all the necessary information that companies need to see. So for the user, we provide the services to identify their skills and improve them as well as providing the users with a list of companies that we believe they can thrive in based on their current skills and their skill level. So lastly, Skillmatcher is developed by people similar age with our target customers, which allows us to further cater to young people as we relate with their problems and have experienced their problems firsthand. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, guys. I, I really think this is such a creative idea. I think that the education market is so fragmented, right? I mean, we in, in education, we always get the question, how can we get internships for our kids? Or how can we get um, it's specific, very specific tailored tutoring? So I can think of so many kids that would use this. Um, but uh, to the judges, any comments, any observations, any questions to share? Would you guys use this for your kids? Did you guys struggle with, with searching through a fragmented market? Well, to be fair, um, thanks, Jeremy, Abigail. I, I just want to comment one thing. I cannot say about my kids because my kids are both grown up, 24 and 22, and I don't, I'm not a tiger mom, so I don't even understand what they are doing. But I just went back to school, and I do, I do agree with uh, Jeremy and 
Abigail that there is such a huge market on this one. And, uh, you know, my peers in my college in University of Indonesia are mostly 17 years old, old, 18 and 19. And they do need to have some step up, right? So if this app can really help Indonesians, um, if I, I assume the target market also for Indonesia, right? Um, this would be able to be um, marketed through uh, in, uh, Indonesia's university as well. Because I think Indonesia has a huge potential, but we just need to get into the potentials and we need to understand what are needed by students or um, peers. I mean, because I, I'm just back to school to, to, be, to, to actually pursue my law, law, law degree, bachelor. So my peers is like 17, 18, 19, and I'm, I'm close to 50, 49. So I'm looking forward towards your apps. How ready are your, your program or your apps? Um, can I ask Jeremy, Abigail? I mean, mostly it's just like the fun. fun. It's more like an idea, I guess. Pitching idea or idea. Okay, good enough. But I think I, I love your idea. I, I agree with Kevi. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Paul, would you like to, to ask a question? Uh, it's more to make a comment. I'm working with a group in New Zealand that's building a similar solution. And uh, one of the things that they're focusing on is that 14 to 24 year olds often don't feel like they have a clear path and they don't know why they're in school. They don't know what they're gonna do after school. They don't have you know, they feel all the pressure about going to university and getting a good job, but they aren't sure how to process all that stress and all that, that you know, pressure they're getting from the system, from school, from parents. And so what they're focusing on is not just making, you know, the way it started was similar to yours, where it was, you know, helping them match make with jobs. But what they realized as, as we were building it is that people needed a place to inventory their, their passions, their interests, their skills, their future desires, and to map where they are and how to get to where they want to go. And that would give them hope. And the hope would take them out of the dark places that sometimes people go to. It's not just a teenage thing. It's, a, it's an adult thing as well. And so we're, we're building the platform in New Zealand and then we'll expand to Australia and then to Southeast Asia and then the world. And again, competition is validation. It's a good thing. So I'd say you might consider building in of a, a, a decision tree that would allow people to click through the options of what they, they hope for themselves, not the pressure that they're feeling from parents and school and society and things, but hope for themselves that will give them a direction and a path forward to make their high school relevant, to make going to university relevant and the acquisition of skills relevant. That's a great point, guys. Uh, I think to, to Paul's point, remember that you have two users in a sense. You have the parents and you have the kids and they both have very different incentives sometimes as you guys very well know, right? So it's where do those incentives overlap and where can you, you know, find that? I think that that's a really uh, interesting point. 